welcome back to the garage. Once you've got the front brakes swapped over to disc, the next thing we have to do is we actually have to change out this master cylinder and the proportioning valve. This master cylinder here is a ma it's a manual brake system. If it were a power brake, we'd have a big vacuum booster back behind it. We can also tell just looking at the top that it's designed for drum brakes all around because these two chambers are the same size. If we've got a drum and a disc, then they'll be different sized. So this is going to have to come out. The other thing that needs to be switched is the proportioning valve, which is way down here on this guy. So that's going to also have to come out. That, the job of that proportioning valve is to effectively proportion how much pressure from the brake pedal goes to the front and rear so that it's equal so we don't lock up one while the other isn't uh, applying a whole lot of brake. In order to swap these, we're going to have to take off these brake lines. My experience is that these brake lines, especially on something this old, are usually pretty brittle. They also tend to be rusted together. So go into this assuming that you're going to have to replace them. You'll probably twist off the ends or round off the nuts. If you don't, uh, consider it a win. So what I've done is I've actually gone through and I hosed these things down with some JB80 penetrating oil uh, yesterday to hopefully give me a little bit of a chance of getting these off. So let's get into it. And yeah, I know that things like this are ugly. This and this. The wiring on this car is also a disaster, but that's a disaster for another day. Right now, we're focusing on the brakes. As I said, line wrenches are really good at stripping out these. I tend to want to use something like this. These are fairly expensive, but they're really good pliers. This angle, you can see those two jaws always stay parallel to one another, and it's got this fulcrum, so when you squeeze down, it really bites hard. Be aware that if you've still got brake fluid, be aware that if you've still got brake fluid in this, brake fluid is pretty corrosive. It's really hard on paint, so you want to probably drain it if you haven't already, or put something under it to catch it, even rags, to grab some of that fluid from dripping onto the paint of your, your inner fender well there. There we go, that's disconnected. Now we just need to go down, pull out the proportioning valve, and also go inside the passenger cabin and disconnect the brake, uh, basically the, the rod that goes over to the pedal. All right, this is underneath the dash here. This is really an uncomfortable place to get to and hard to view, but so this is the brake. This is the clutch. So the brake comes up, see that bolt through there, right here, I'm going to take this nut off and that bolt comes out. So that's what we've got to do while we're up under here. Uh, I will not video this because, well, there's no way I can do that while holding this camera. So if you get up under here and your first reaction is, boy, that looks like that's going to really suck to take out, your reaction is right getting that out really does suck. So there is the bolt that you have to take out. This is a, a lock nut, so it doesn't want to turn. Basically, you have to use a wrench the entire length. It's not a matter of just loosening it and pulling it out. I could not get up on there with a ratchet on either side. There just isn't space. So what I ended up using was just a standard 9 16 wrench here on one side, on the nut, and then a three-quarter inch on this big side here, but I had to modify my wrench. That allowed me to get in on it like this. That's what I had to do. Now that I've got the rod from the pedal off, I have to pull out these four bolts. There's two on this side, and then two of them back in here. Take those out and that master cylinder will come right out. 
and that'll give us a little bit more space here to move down on that. That's why I'm taking it out first. Though, the proportioning valve might have to come out from underneath. We'll see. Well, with the steering column and everything down there, there's just no way to get in on there with some pliers. So we're going to have to go with the line wrench. And uh, I can almost guarantee that this means I'm going to be making new brake lines. Well, we now have a round flare nut. Lock on this driver's side. So it looks like I'm going to be making new front brake lines for uh, both sides. There is one bolt down in there that holds that proportioning valve to the frame on a little bracket. We'll see how lucky we are at getting that out. There we go, removed. You can see it was rounding off those corners as I was trying to take it out on both of them. We start with some stainless steel line and we take some armor, feed it on here. Like that. Then we just need to cut it to length. And there we go. There's one line for the driver's side. All kidding aside, I've got a video on how to make these lines. I'll put it down in the description or actually just a link right up here. I actually ordered these from Fine Lines. I'll put a link down in the comments. This is the driver's side, came with a full passenger side too, pre-bent, and it came with the pair that come from the master cylinder down. These, I haven't decided I'm going to use both because again, I'm probably going to put in a line lock, but it was 120 for the stainless steel version, I think the uh, regular steel was something about like $80. Uh, the number of mistakes it would have taken to make this guy, I would have used $120 worth of stainless anyway. So I just bought them. Let's get them installed. When I took this guy out of the box, it seemed too short to me. Laying it up here, it looks like it's the right width. It also looks like it's probably a really good fit. So I've got to pull out the old one, the broken one, or, well, the one that's cut, get it out, and then reroute this one. The kit comes with this proportioning valve. Really, what it does is it's just... All, it allows you to increase or decrease the brake pressure on the rear, right? So the idea is that the rear line comes through here and goes out to the brakes, and then you can adjust it to increase or decrease the amount of brake on the rear to make it match the front. So this needs to be in line to the rear. The rear comes in here and goes out here. I... These were all terrible, so I needed to replace them anyway. So this needs to likely, so this is basically split here, and we've got pressure for the rear, goes out to here. 
There's a plug there, but it could go there. It's, this is more of a distribution block than anything. The front comes in here and goes to the passenger side, to the driver's side. So I'm going to pull all these out. This can either be in line here, or we can put it in line up here. What I will likely do is put it in line up here because it's easier to get to. And then this is the front. So on the front, I'll put in the line lock. Another option, which probably would be better if you have access to it, is they make one of these proportioning valves for a later year. I don't know what the cutoff years are, but probably 72 and up. At any rate, if you can get one of these out of a car that has disc brakes, you can just use it instead of having to put one of these in. So it's a better call. Be a lot easier, a lot cleaner, but I don't have access to one of those. So When you clean up this proportioning valve, you can see I just did this with mostly a wire brush. It's really important that you go in here and get this cleaned out. This side, air should be able to flow through all of that. And then this side, air should be able to flow through all of this. I just went through with some brake cleaner, sprayed through it, and then used compressed air to blow it out to make sure that any rust or anything like that is not in there. Here's the driver's side hard line. You can see they're quite a bit different, in fact. This new one has this 90 here, or this one does not. We'll see how it fits. This driver's side one takes a slightly different route. It comes over here, whereas the original just came down under. But you can see it meets up, hooks up just fine. We've got all the lines hooked up except the ones that come up to the master cylinder. So next, got to clean up this area and get the master cylinder mounted. It turns out that the metal here is actually in really good shape. It's a little pitted, but it's not near as bad as it looked. I think when this was painted, the master cylinder simply wasn't taken off, so the area around it just never got prepped very well. At any rate, we got it cleaned up, hit it with some primer and some color match paint, then we'll get this master cylinder on. Here's the original master cylinder. The kit comes with this one here. You can see much different sizes on the chambers here. It also came with an activation rod that I don't think I'm going to use for anything. It's definitely not the same length as this in any way, shape, or form. So maybe it's for another body style later in the year or something. And it came with a kit that has Probably the important piece as well. Looks like it comes with new studs if you want to put those in the firewall. I'm not going to swap those. This is... Looks like a cover maybe for that. Bolts for that cover and a new boot. I'm going to try to separate this push rod from this piston so we can reuse it over here. That does not want to come out of there. This rod is inside this piston here with basically just a ball and socket. The challenge is on the end of this, 
there's an O-ring, and that O-ring with this age gets really hard, and pulling it past this is really, really challenging. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some leverage here, put this in. Put this on here. And we'll put this pipe on the end of this so that I can give a good pull on it. Seriously, the amount of force you have to do there is huge. You can see this old O-ring here. That's what was preventing it from coming out. We had to pull it past. The downside here, because that got torn, is I don't have that rubber piece, and the kit does not come with one. So we'll try some O-rings or something to, uh, to make something up here. It's not critical, but it just helps keep the rod from pulling out. To replace that rubber piece, I've got a O-ring set here. We're going to look at the 010 and 011 size, which are here and here. First, slide that rubber boot on so you don't have to deal with it afterward. And I put three of the 010s on there. And I go a little bit bigger, the 011. And then those slide down in there. And now that holds it. This piston just pushes in by hand. So we're going to put the bolts on, tighten it down. There we go. Master cylinder is now ready to go back. While I'm in here, this is that bolt that goes through the pedal. This O-ring is what makes it really, really hard to get in and out. I'm going to see if I've got a replacement for that. Pull that out, see if that kit has something that'll work. There we go. Surprisingly, the kit doesn't seem to have come with hardware to mount that. Had new studs, but no nuts. Put some nylocks on there. Master cylinder is in. I am very much not looking forward to crawling back under there. This is such a pain in the ass. All right, the master cylinder is in. Still have to run some lines from the cylinder down to the proportioning valve. Get everything bled out. We'll do that in another video since we have to get that proportioning valve bracket made. Also, we're putting in a line lock, so lots of other things to do. Just to keep this video short, Thanks for watching.